Welcome to the Market Mindset. We are the hub for news, results, and CEO interviews focusing the junior commodities sector. We provide market analysis and perspective that will help position you for solid returns. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you can help support us by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and clicking the notification bell. For more info, you can visit our website. All links are in the description below. Now let's get into today's video. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Market Mindset. Uh, it's a real pleasure to catch up with Sean Kun Kun, who's the president and CEO over at Dolly Varden. Um, if you don't know Dolly Varden, we're talking about BC, the Golden Triangle, well known, resource rich, lots of transactions. I think it's about five billion. We'll let Sean tell us though. Uh, a lot of activity up there, and uh, you know, a lot of activity at Dolly Varden as well. Not only with the transaction earlier in the year. Uh, and uh, raising some money with some big names. They're undergoing a program. So there's lots of news. Let's catch up and let's hear it all. And we'll, we'll do a little recount and get us up to today and what we're looking forward to moving forward. Hey, Sean, how are you doing this morning? Andrew, we're doing excellent. Thank you so much for having me on. It's a pleasure to have you. Like it's, uh, you know, we've heard of Dolly Varden for a long time. I know you've been there for a couple of years. And boy, a lot has happened in a couple of years, not only in the market, but certainly with, with you guys, you've hit like that, that magic number of gold that people always want to see. And I'll let you kind of talk to that. But once again, it's a story that's weathered this down, this down market um, on lots of good news and lots of optimism. So maybe kind of give us a little bit of the history here to, to catch people up because a lot of our, our subscribers are more generalist and they're just getting to know the, the space. Uh, let us know kind of, when you came in and what's kind of happened up till today. Okay, uh, great. And again, just I'm grateful to have this opportunity. So thanks for having me on. Um, so I'll take you back in the time machine. Um, I think it's before I'll even get, I'll go back even before I came in. And so Dolly's been around for a long time. Uh, it was actually a, a US president who was a mining engineer, Herbert Hoover, who opened the mine back in 1919. So it's got a storied history. Um, the Golden Triangle has got a storied history. You know, you talk SK Creek, uh, Bruce Jack, Premier, like some of the biggest and greatest, highest grade silver gold mines on the planet are here. So Dolly's embedded into that rich history, which is what attracted me to the, the company. So two, uh, two and a half years ago, Dolly was valued at about $20 million. And when I looked at the map and I looked at the project, it seemed like the strategic piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. I'm always looking for opportunities in areas that I think are gonna become very relevant. And as you mentioned, you're exactly right. It's been $5 billion worth of M&A transactions. So, you know, for your, for your audience, we're talking about companies that have 10, 20, $30 million market caps that are getting acquired for billions of dollars. So it's, it's not, 5 billion is not a big number when we think of the Fed and we think of trillions, but- <laughs> yeah. In small cap world, it's material. And for shareholders, it's meant stocks that have started in the pennies and that have gone to dollars and dollars and dollars a share. So there's a lot of value that's being created in this part of the world. And there's a couple of reasons for it. Number one, I've got to give credit where credit's due, and that's to the BC government. They've brought in a lot of infrastructure. So they've brought in roads, they've brought in power, they've brought in, um, they've upgraded deep water seaports. So you have the, a very supportive government. You have local communities that have known nothing but mining. So they're very supportive. So you have social license, which is so, so important. And then you've got just tremendous endowment. So you've got grades, you've got in infrastructure, um, the gold price and the silver price is higher today than it was back when these mines were in operation. So that's helped. And then the last thing is, is you've got glaciers and ice receding at a very rapid rate so you're getting a lot of new exposure so and and then in addition you know a, a lot of these operations you know you needed to get back on a, a, a on a donkey and yeah, ride yeah. a glacier to get to these things and they're still profitable but today of course we've got different methods um modern methods so i saw dolly varden as this tremendous opportunity it was high grade it was silver and and, and andrew for your for your benefit you know, I had helped build a, a gold company back in the 2000s, and that gold company went from inception to a billion five. It went from seven cents to five dollars. And my lesson was when gold goes, silver goes further. 
And so I was looking specifically for a silver company and I didn't want that company to be in Argentina, into Chile and Peru. You've got all this leftist movement and, you know, it's just, I wanted it to be in a safe jurisdiction. So what I've done with Dolly, what we've accomplished in two and a half years is we've raised money strategically with mining companies that want this stuff. They're looking for to replenish their, their mineral inventory. So we've raised money with strategic miners. We've raised it with sophisticated institutions and investors like Eric Sprott. And, and one of the reasons I think we've been very successful is we've increased our mineral in inventory. So we've gone from 40 million ounces of silver to 140 million ounces of silver. And it's why Dolly Barton's share price has outperformed. It's why we're growing. It's why we're building. But what happens when you have something real and you've got something that's growing and you bring in money and then you bring in a team, like we, you look at our this new team that's running Dolly Barton, it's a team of mind builders. It's a team of bankers. It's a team that's sophisticated and it knows how to take these companies and to move them along, develop them, either bring them into production or to sell them. And it's all at the benefit of shareholders. So why I'm excited right now is we're in the midst of a 30,000 meter drill program. And again, like I look at Dolly Varden as a bank. Okay. It's a bank with cash. It's a bank with silver and gold. My thinking is if we can increase our bank balances, if we can increase that mineral inventory, it's going to increase our share price and how I, I know two ways to do that. I can increase our mineral inventory by going out into a boardroom and making an acquisition. And that's how we've added a lot of ounces to Dolly Barton. We've done it. We've done it accretively. We've done it for the benefit of shareholders. Now, the other way we can do that is drilling. And that's the fun way. It's, it's, it's where the excitement, the treasure hunting comes into this. Wow. And we've the best place to find more is next to a mine. And we've got two past producing mines in the property. We have another seven deposits that we hope to be mines in the future. And, um, you know, we're in the midst of this drill program. We've got results coming. So that's sort of a high level overview. And again, it's a young team. So it's a team that's full of energy, but we've got experience. We've done this before. And I think we're, we're really at a place where we can hit this market and we are silver so rare and unique, and I can go on for hours and hours and tell you of how special silver is, but it's even more unique and special to find it in a safe jurisdiction. And I think that's our differentiator. We are the only precious metal company with this size and this grade of endowment in a safe jurisdiction. And it, it's just a great vehicle if you're looking for exposure to silver and gold. Mm -hmm. Great. There's a, there's a lot there. And I cannot stress enough the importance of a safe jurisdiction nowadays, as we're seeing maybe a couple of years ago, people would have thought, oh, everything in the world is, is fairly calm. Everything seems to be okay. That is not the case anymore. Uh, and it more than ever. Uh, and and even a couple of years ago, I'd say a lot of the, the majors, they're, they're coming home. They're looking to very safe regulation places where they can count on regulations. They can count on what's going to happen. And uh, certainly, you know, the proof is in the pudding in the golden triangle with the amount of transactions. So, and when I say like you're in a, a good location, we're talking about a lot of mines, a lot of big projects in a very small compact space. It, it's, it's, it's not closeology. Like people say, Hey, we're close to some mine. It's no, no, no. There's a lot of activity. Um, and I think people need to know that never mind the fact that you're some like, 15 kilometers from a port as well, like from as well. So the one thing I want to say about the golden triangle is if you take a circle and you draw it around KSM and uh, Bruce Jack, it is the richest 20 kilometers on this planet for gold and silver mineralization. But what you have to appreciate here is this is a remote part of Northwest BC. And, and it's gotten less remote thanks to the BC government the last five years with bringing in roads and bringing in power and all that. But for hundreds, of, you know, for hundreds of years, this was an area where, you know, it, it it's really remarkable how much has already been produced in this area, considering how hard it was to get to and, and, and the elements in terms of weather and whatnot. But the big competitive advantage that we have at Dolly Barton is we're located on Tidewater. We've got, we're close to a town, you know, we've got roads to the property. 
Um, and so the infrastructure is second to none. And I'd argue we're in the best place in, in the triangle in terms of location. But the other standpoint is it's underexplored. And what I've done recently is there's three deposits in the north, there's four in the south, and the area in between those deposits hasn't been explored because we're the first company in 100 years to consolidate the land package. And so, you know, we're 50% of the drill program is focused on making a new big discovery. And there's some things that we learned from our last round of drilling, some of the structural controls and some new areas that we can go to. So I, I'm very, very confident that we are going to continue to add resources. We've got, we've continued to add new exploration opportunities, and we're going to continue building on that 140 million ounce uh, inventory. And I mean, it's what I like to always point out to people too is kind of to tell the, the story. And some of the story kind of comes together, and this is a bit forward looking and maybe possibly one of your major investors is Hecla, who's a neighbor as well. And there's a bit of history there with Hecla and Dolly Varden before your time, I believe, as well, which makes at first it's not uh it's not a, a drama event, but it makes it curious for an investor to go, oh. Oh, so these guys have not only come in for the last private placement, but they're also a major shareholder uh, in the company. They're a next door neighbor in a very, very hot, busy sector. That that paints one picture for sure. So, you know, if we look at Hecla, uh, they've been producing precious metals for 130 years. And in 2016, they opportunistically saw a very weak Dolly Varden. And so they came in and, and tried to do a hostile takeover. And the company had fought them off. And the case went to the highest court in the province, the BC Supreme Court. And it was ultimately determined um, in the favor of keeping Dolly Varden independent. And subsequent to that hostile takeover attempt, Hecla has built up a land position in the Golden Triangle. They've invested a lot of money into Dolly Varden and they've maintained a 10% interest in the company. The way I look at Hecla, it's the same way I look at um, the First Nations groups in the area. It's the same way I look at our shareholders. It's the same way I looked at Fury Gold when we recently acquired Homestake Ridge. I really believe in win-win scenarios. I really believe there's enough meat on this bone where we can all prosper together. And so I've taken a different approach to Hecla. Um, we've got great communications. We've got a joint technical committee. I am grateful to leverage their capital Half of the money that I've raised, half of the $45 million that I've raised uh, as CEO um, has come from Eric Sprott and Hecla. So without Hecla, Dolly Varden isn't where it is today, number one. Number two, so it's one thing to leverage their financial uh, financial abilities, but the other part of it is their technical abilities. So we've got their vice president of exploration, uh, Kurt Allen, part of a uh, joint technical committee. So we run exploration ideas by him. We're grateful for the insights he gives us because he's he's got access to Greens Creek up in Alaska, which has got some similarities to Billy Varden. He's got access to Casa Berardi. He's got access to all these different projects that Hecla manages. And that insight is very helpful to us. So um, it's an interesting relationship. Listen, in a perfect world, we are building Dolly Varden now uncovering all the low hanging fruit and we're selling it at a time where the gold and silver price are on a breakout. That would be the perfect scenario. But the other scenario is let's partner with companies that want to develop this project because in the mining business, it's fraught with risks. You know, there's uh, construction risks, there's execution risks, there's all sorts of risks that we have overcome, um, in terms of we, we've overcome the financing risks, we've overcome the some of the discovery risks, but um, you know there's other risks. And so if we can de-risk this project and move it along into a company that can advance it and can develop it and can produce, and if we can do that and our shareholders are supportive and, and, are, and are doing well in terms of the equity, I think we would support that. Excellent. I just want to make a comment as well and bring attention because a lot of people say, oh, okay, great. You've got Eric Sprott. Everyone has Eric Sprott in it, but it's it's a material amount that Eric Sprott has in, in your deal uh, as well. I think Listen, it's 11%, is it? Or maybe, somewhere? Maybe everyone feels this way, but I, <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I have a special relationship with Eric Sprott. And maybe, you know, again, and Eric owns 
you know, a hundred companies where he's a better than a 10% shareholder. So there's probably a hundred CEOs running around feeling like they have a special relationship, but I really do. And I really feel like without Eric, we wouldn't be here because the first thing I did is I reached out to Eric and he got behind us and took a 19.9% stake. We were his silver play in the golden triangle, high grade. He really got behind us and supported us. And as the company's grown from 20 million to 150 million, you know, you would think his stake would be really diluted down, but it, he's maintained and, uh, you know, he's still got it. He's our second largest shareholder um, at, at around 11%. So he's been, he has been so tremendous from the standpoint of getting behind us during the transaction, uh, signing lockup agreements and, and voting towards the transaction. And he's just basically really gone behind us. And, um, you know, on our last financing that we did, we, we raised $13 million at a dollar two, um, you know, five of the $13 million came from Hecla and Eric. And, uh, that's on top of, uh, Hecla putting in, uh, I'd have to go back and look at my notes here, but it was a significant amount of money in Q1. I think it was, I think if you add them all up, I think Hecla's invested about $8 million in Dolly Varden just in the first quarter of this year alone. Excellent. And I guess the, I mean, there's, there's, it gets people up to speed. So you can see, okay, I see what's happening. And your stock has fared well, given if you look at a lot of other you know stocks in the space, they've just gotten really beat up. And it's because there's lots of this good, news and, and story to build upon and this program's 99 drill holes i think it is or 30,000 meters yeah I, I think like the big takeaway i want for your audience to get is number one for anybody who thinks they know dolly varden just caveat this is the new dolly varden it's gone from the small toy mine to this big project number one it's got a new team that's young that's dynamic that's had success we this is not our first rodeo and um, and in terms of this program, we I get to drill these tremendous targets. Like we just acquired Homestake Ridge, and there's I would argue one of the smartest teams in the junior mining space. Uh, Michael Hendrickson, Ivan Bebic, Tim Clark. These guys have done it before, and I get to drill Michael's best targets that yeah. he never. So that's number one. So we've got that on the homestake side, but yeah, we've, we've designed a hundred hole program. Um, and we we're we're halfway through the program in terms of meters where, you know, the drill efficiency has been tremendous. I'm anticipating results soon. Um, so we'll put out results. And again, now those are going to be the cat. The results are good. If we can show growth, if we can show consistent grades, mineable widths, um, that is going to be a driver for the share price. And it's, and listen, there are other companies beyond Hecla that have reached out, that have shown an interest that, you know, Hecla is not the only silver producer. And so there are other companies that you know, want to come to site or, and I, I, again, I think if we show growth, that's going to encourage others to, and create some competitive tension for the corporates. And then, um, and, and lastly, you know, we'll start reporting results but we're still, we got months and months and months of drilling ahead, a lot of more meters, a lot of more holes. I'm inclined because we have 21 million in the bank. Let's go from three rigs. Let's go to four. Maybe let's go to five. And let's really, because this is the time for us. You know, part of me doesn't care what the market's doing in the standpoint of this. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Yeah. No. Nope. Yeah. In the first year, when the silver price took off, we capitalized. When I took over this company, we were 25 cent stock. The bulk of the money I raised in year one was at 71 cents. All the money I've raised this year um, has been north of a dollar. So we've raised money in a non-dilutive way. We've got a lot of money in the treasury. We've got the targets. We've got the team. This is the time. You know, there's no waiting for, no, let's go. And I know when you've got something from my experience, when you have something that's real, that's right, people will come to you. They'll pay a premium. They'll be strategic. And there'll be no shortage of money for the right projects. And so I think this is a time where if we're having success, we've got to we've got to shift into the fifth gear and really push. Excellent. Well, that's what people want to hear. And it's great to have that money in the bank, too, because that was my next question is, you know, OK, what's the cash positions like? It's, it's obviously fine. And you can see like when you look at a graph uh, or you look at a map, the gap that you're going to kind of 
like go down, there's a lot of space to drill. There's a lot going on. This is, you know, never mind. You could spend uh, time just moving from the indicated over to the inferred, which would be great. But there's a lot of open space to to develop that looks on trend. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a geo. I'm not so, but you can see from a map, it looks promising. <laughs> there's a lot happening. <laughs> When I was uh, 22, 23, I went out to my first uh, project and I, I went and worked for this company for six and a half years. The chief geologist there taught me a lot, right? He taught me to look for pathways, fluid pathways, to look for structure. And he taught me that gold and silver doesn't fall from the sky, right? It comes from deep within. And so at Dolly, and, and actually that chief geologist, his name's Bill Ferreira. He's actually spending a, a month at Dolly Varden. He's actually on the project right now. And he and you know, he's he's essentially retired and he doesn't need to be here, but he's here for the love of discovery and to support me in finding new minds. And um, so Bill's on the property and Bill's got a lot to work with here because this project hasn't been drilled. Like the deposits, they're they haven't been drill tested below 350 meters. So in addition to the five and a half kilometers in a long strike in between the deposits, they're open at depth. So, and we're gonna learn so much during that infill program of the structural controls of the system so we can drill deeper. And uh, so there's a lot of growth, a lot of, a lot of opportunity here. We've got the money, we've got the team, we've got the targets. And I'm grateful for the way the stock's traded, um, the valuation. And But I think, you know, we're still in the infancy. There's companies that, that are neighboring us that have larger market caps that have no resources. And so I think that for investors, you can take comfort in knowing that it's we're a past producer. You know, there's been 20 million ounces of silver that's already been produced here at grade. You've got another 140 million ounces in the ground. And then if we find more, which I think we will, that's your upside. And, and the one thing I'll note here is the silver price has been very flat for two years. But when it does move, these companies really go. You look at companies like First Majestic that were up to $30 a share when the price of silver was at $30, and now they're below 10 Dolly Varden's as correlated to the silver price as these well-known silver plays. Um, you know, silver goes up 1%. Traditionally, we've gone up 3x. And so we've got a, a tremendous leverage to silver, rising silver prices, but we don't need higher silver prices. The studies that have been done on this project were done, get this, Andrew, at $12 silver oh, wow. and, and $13.50 gold. Oh, so excellent. We, at some point, we will like to be updating those studies. And I think that the robustness of the economics with these higher prices, in addition to the larger resource base, will be reflected. Excellent. Well, listen, that's a lot for people to digest, but this is the type of project that uh, we love to cover and love to get out there because uh, you've got a floor uh, and, a, and a, the ceilings, you know, not limitless, but it's, it's open for sure. Uh, and, you know, you can see it develop. The story develops when you see the maps, you see it play out and you see the work you've put in. And like all things, you have to have it all. You have to have the team that has the right skill set, and you have that. You need the right money, which you have. And then, of course, it's always the, the right metal in the right uh, location, which, I mean, I don't think anyone would argue <laughs> with precious metals and also this BC region. So hopefully this is th that that piece of the puzzle, this part that puts it all together. Yeah, no, you know, listen, I'm, I'm looking for this to be a feather in my cap. Right. And, and, and not and more so the geologists, people like uh, Amanda Bennett, Rob Van Egmont, Andrew Hamilton, Rob McLeod, this team that like these guys are relentless these guys are <laughs> yeah relentless. and they've been so successful at taking something that people thought they knew and adding more to and and you know looking at some of the historic data and bringing some new eyes and ideas to it and uh, it's it's translated into discoveries and i think this is going to be a big year for us andrew um, and I think when you've got in this business, when you've got a horse that's winning, you got to let your winners run. And um, this one, I, you know, based on my 18 years in this business, I've had this feeling twice in my career and um, it's going to be bittersweet when it's over. Excellent. Well, let's leave it at that. I mean, that's excellent. I really appreciate your time. And we're definitely watching for any news release that comes out. And uh, when anything does come out, we'd love to have you back on and walk us through it. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you so much. Take care. We'll talk to you real soon.
Tschüss.